Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to a brand new series. This is Surviving Oasis. So, so, what is the Oasis map? Okay, so I've loaded up an example map here of the Oasis using the exact same world traits to generate this. However, it's a different seed, so everything's in a different spot. Essentially, with the Oasis map here has a forest biome that we'll be starting in, but it's surrounded by lots and lots of sand. Now, that doesn't look too bad. I'll tell you, look at the temperature overlay. This stuff out here is incredibly hot. Look at that, 80 degrees Celsius. 63 degrees and all of this has no thermal barrier between my forest biome and that out there so a lot of heat is going to be bearing down into my forest biome at the very beginning of the map now you guys voted on what world traits i wanted to have here so the first one that we have is geoactive we also have miscalculated pod location extra volcanoes and then magma channels and frozen core was so close together that i went with frozen core so as we look around the map here, you see different areas where we have these volcanoes. So that gives us many, many opportunities to actually tap into some really cool thermal generation if we wanted to. However, it does expose my map to some potential situations where the volcano might be not behind abyssalite and actually bleeds in a lot of heat to the base. So uh, it could be very terrifying digging through some sand and then all of a sudden the sand goes from 70 degrees to several hundred degrees because there happens to be a volcano above it. Hopefully I don't run into that situation and get absolutely melted, but it might potentially happen. Now because it's geoactive, we'll notice that there's lots and lots of geysers and stuff around, so we'll be able to explore many of those and do some fun stuff with that. The miscalculated pod location means that we're not necessarily in the middle of the map. So in my map, I have absolutely no idea where the center of the base is because it's not going to be in the center. And then finally, the frozen core down here, instead of it being magma, is just full of ice. Now this is on a thermal barrier, so it's not actually trying to cool my map, unless you have a weird exposed spot like that, but that's not much. But for the most part, it's all behind all of this abyss light. So one cool idea I have is maybe taking some volcanoes here and letting it have like a magma fall, and then have it come down here into the ice biome and generate lots and lots of steam. I think that would be pretty cool. It'd actually be like a real geyser. So that's the type of map we will be exploring here over these next several episodes here. Now, because this map is going to be very, very challenging, uh, I did bring in some really good duplicates to start things off here. I focused on Diver's Lungs for two of my duplicates. That's going to reduce the amount of uh, oxygen I need in order to keep them alive here at the very beginning by about 30 kilograms per cycle. So that's 15 each. And for reference, each duplicate here consumes 60 kilograms of oxygen in a cycle if they breathe the entire map. And then besides that, I focused one on research. I focused another one on suit wearing because I'll, I'll be doing lots and lots of suit traveling because take a look at the heat already, right? It's hot. Everything out there might potentially be in a suit. And then the last one I focused on here was building. So my first order of business is going to be focusing on trying to protect myself from the heat. So to do that, I'm going to need to research insulated tiles while I dig around the map and prepare to actually build a heat shield that surrounds this entire biome right here. And since it's such an interesting like arrangement, that should be a pretty cool like little loop that, that my dupes will have to go around. So I'll end up putting tiles like this and then kind of building them out like that as I go around the map, which means I'll have to build little ladders and dig this stuff out. That way I can protect myself from the heat. If I don't do that, the heat is just going to seep in and then I'll lose my ability to actually grow plants and stuff. Now, since I'm working in the forest biome, uh, I pretty much have different materials that I would normally have when I was starting out. So the metal I'll be dealing with most here is just going to be aluminum ore. There's going to be some copper ore if I venture out here, but for the most part, that's going to be the two ores that, I'll, that are metal that I'm dealing with. There's lots and lots of dirt and igneous rock. So that's pretty much it. Besides that, we have these cool little pips that are running around, so that's neat. And I can use those to plant up different farms and stuff, so so that'll be kind of cool. I'm going to dig up here, and want to, I want to uncover as many oxy ferns as I can, because I'm going to try to use that to keep my duplicates breathing for a good amount of time. Now, an oxy fern that grows wild doesn't actually put out much oxygen, only 8, uh, sorry, only 7.8 grams a second. So if we take a look at a duplicate here, like Nicola, he's actually inhaling at 100 grams a second. So that's just a normal duplicate. But if we take a look at Ren here, it's at 75. So, and that's because they have the diver's lung trait. So I'm going to get down here to the water. That will give me access to what I need. I need dirt and I need water for research. So I can kind of just put that stuff right down here. Oh, and it looks like I have more room down here. So, so that's cool. Essentially, since carbon dioxide is heavier than oxygen, it's going to flow down in, in my base. 
So I want to potentially move some of these oxyferns up here. You see they're no, they're no longer in atmosphere. I'm going to want to dig those up and put those lower in the base. One of the things I can do here with the schedule is I don't need two tiles of downtime. I can get a little bit more work out of them. There we go. And we're just going to set up a power generation station here with a little bit of battery, connect it with some wire, and then we'll do a research station. It'll all be just right here. Now, the one thing I would like to do here is just put a tile not right there. Okay. <laughs> put tiles everywhere. Don't don't put tiles everywhere. I always want to put a tile right here in case you have an accident. The, the dupes P won't actually flow down there. Speaking of that, I actually have a dupe that will pee sooner than everybody else. Canalina has a small bladder or a very active bladder, whatever that trait was. <laughs> so, so she's going to need the bathroom soon. All right, so I got to build my outhouses here. No, build them. All right, let's take a look at the research here. First thing I want to do is just get basic farming. That'll allow me to uh, plant some of these oxy ferns if I need them to be planted. So that'll help. All right, so there we go. We've got one restroom set up. I think I need to plop down another one real quick here. Move back over there. There you go. I think Catalina wants to go ahead and use that restroom. Let's see if we can supply it. There we go. Ren's in there. There we go. It's been relieved. No, 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 no. Just move in there. Ah! <laughs> there we go. All my dupes have used the bathroom, so no, no emergency. All right, so we'll dig out this. I'm just going to go ahead and throw down a little pitcher pump. Mm, that'll be right there. Actually, a pitcher pump, if you move it out here to the left a little bit, that's a, that's a pretty good spot, because then you can usually build a ladder right there and kind of dig this out. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and dig all the way down here just to see what we have. Any way we do this, I'm just going to have to dig around my entire map just to kind of plot things out so that I can build that heat shield, which is the most important thing for me to do right now. I mean, besides getting set up so that I can actually you know, produce enough oxygen for my dupes, but they will have enough oxygen for a few days. As far as food, we have these hexalent right here. Uh, we can actually harvest those and get a decent amount of food out of them. So food is not my biggest concern right now. There we go. Got that research done. That went by pretty quick. I'm going to go ahead and just dig out a little bit of a cubby hole for my dupes to sleep inside of. So that way I can put the cots inside of there and we can also turn that into a barracks. So we'll get our first room up and running and that'll help with morale a little bit. I can also move this outhouse inside of there and kind of deal with the germs if I wanted to roll that way too. Right now I'm not worried about that stuff too much. Okay, so the next thing I need to research for here is just going to be the supercomputer. Because I will need the supercomputer to do advanced research so that I can actually get down here to the insulated tile, which is going to be this one right down here. So I'll keep Catalina on there. She's going to continue to do lots and lots of research. And we'll dig this out and dig that out. There you go. That'll let some oxygen in. Wow, this goes down a long ways. Okay, so there is one thing I need to pay attention to here, and that is that Ren is a noisy sleeper. So if Ren is next to some of my other dupes, they will actually wake them up. Same with the lights. So <laughs> shine bugs and all that stuff will mess me up. What do you have? Oh, you're going to plant something way over there. All right. <laughs> all right, so if I slap down a pneumatic door right there, boom, we'll have our first little barracks. See? Boom. Barracks. Small morale boost. Okay, since Ren is a noisy sleeper, I'm going to go ahead and move him right back here. And then I'm going to try to uproot some of these right there and see if I can get an oxy fern down there. That way I can always, if I run into oxygen problems down here, I can at least try to move them. Right now, they're not doing me any good up there, so we'll see if a pip will move that to a better location. All right, there we go. Got the advanced research done, so I can go ahead and slap down a supercomputer. And we'll just plug that in so that I can get that required research up and running. So the main thing about this map here is that it's just going to have a really slow start because you have to protect yourself first, and then at that point, you can create a stable, stable kind of environment down here in the middle, and then you expand. Um, if I try to expand too quickly, I won't have enough oxygen, don't have enough resources to provide oxygen for all of these dupes. Because if we take a look at the oxygen overlay here, you can see that uh, it's already kind of slim right here. And I'm still living off of some oxalite that's actually emitting up here. So there's not a lot of oxygen available here. Matter of fact, it takes a ton of oxyfern seeds just to provide enough oxygen for one duplicate. So luckily I keep digging down and down and down and down. So uh, these areas of higher oxygen are actually flowing up into the base. Although to let gas flow a little bit better, it's usually a good idea to let the let it be two tiles wide. So I want to do that. And down here's where I'm going to have my carbon. I'll, I'll put, I'll try to store my carbon dioxide down here. So I'll actually be able to 
come down here and that's where the oxy ferns will hopefully be if i can set those up so they'll consume the carbon dioxide that flows all the way down my base down there and then turn it into oxygen what's the temps like down here it's already starting to seep in look at that that's 50 that's 36 right there Woo. i need to keep researching all right so i've queued up this insulated tile and we'll see how that goes if i have skills do i have skills not yet but she'll get skills here soon enough and then she'll be able to jump into that advanced research so when it comes to jobs one job i'll need here is to have a duplicate with uh, extra digging which is probably just going to be nicola because because of his abilities so that way i can dig out some of this harder stuff here since we have granite and all of that stuff and that's isolating me in so i really couldn't even dig through here even if i wanted to unless i found a soft spot or something all right, I'll try to dig down over here and just get down there. So if I look at this spot right here, I can see that uh, that's a pretty nice flat area and it's fairly low in the base. And then if I move down about five tiles, since I kind of know how the pips work, I did a whole video on that, you can check it out up here. And then I could plant another row just below that. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. That would put me right here, which isn't all that great, but I could potentially get all the way down here, which is only six or seven and set up a whole nother line of plants if I wanted to. So I should be able to double stack the plants in this area. So I can line up a lot of oxy fern down here. All right, so that looks like it'll work out pretty good. Been able to dig down nice and far, which is weird. I've never dug down like this far at the very beginning of a game, but all right, whatever. And look at that. We already see the first potential geyser or something right down here. Not sure what it is, but if we were to take a look like that, you know something's back there. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on trying to dig upwards. So there's a little bit of food over here, and there's some natural growing mealwood that I want to be able to harvest as well. So actually, I'll go over here to the harvest overlay, and I will automatically harvest everything except for the uh, hexalite there. I don't want to automatically harvest the hexalite because yeah, there's a chance that the food would go bad. Um, so I guess I'll harvest one because I could, I could use the calories. Well, actually, hang on. Don't do that. So I will try to only eat that stuff when I absolutely need it. But as far as the rest of this stuff is, I can just harvest it whenever it's ready. In most maps, I just kind of zoom out and just select everything and just bam, there we go, harvest everything. But that's not the way this one works. I have to be a little bit more careful. So you can see from a little bit farther out, you can see how this this starting biome is, is definitely weird. Um, we've got a, another long spot way over here. I don't know what's going to be over there, but. What an interesting starting biome. It's like really, really weird in how this one is shaped. I mean, even more extreme than most starting biomes I've seen. Okay, now here's my problem here. This needs to be where Ren is sleeping. <clears throat> there you go, Ren. Trying to keep Catalina awake with all your snoring. All right, so there we go. That's pretty cool. All right, Catalina finally has the skill available so she can do some advanced researching that. She'll get a new hat after she goes over here and levels up. Wah. There you go. Slap that hat on. Look how happy she is. All right. What do we have in the printing pod? Uh, the Arbor Acorn is a good one. I'm not going to bring in another dupe unless they are, like, really good. So I'm going to avoid that. Nice. Both of these dupes gained a new skill. So Ren is the one with the excavation skills. So therefore... Ren will be the one who's going to get the hard digging. And Nicola here is going to be my builder, so he's going to try to build those tiles. So there you go. Get your new hats on. Okay, so now that I can actually dig this stuff with my dupe, I can go ahead and start to dig out everything I need in order to build that heat shield. So there we go. Boom, boom, boom. Just keep digging just like that all the way around. I know, it's not very exciting. <laughs> Hey, we finished up the research, so now I have insulated tiles. Perfect. So what I can do is just go in here like this and just plan it all out. There we go. We'll just start building dupes. Okay, so I'm at the point here where I'm planning out the heat shield, and I've got this cool little trick. Using the blueprints mod, what I can do here is select like that, so that'll give me a tile and then two digging tiles above that. So when I use this, I can just go around and plan it like this, and that just saves me a lot of clicks. It's not huge, but I thought it was kind of cool, so I figured it was worth sharing. Boom. So then when I want to go a different direction, I just come over here and copy a different side. And then, yes, I could just do this. I know it's not a huge thing, but every little click that I can save, you know, times a ton, is still going to save me quite a bit of time. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to research here is just going to be ranching. That way I can kind of 
move these pips into the right areas and actually replant these oxyfern seeds as need be. I think a, a couple of things I will set up though, uh, just to kind of keep them keep them rolling here, is I'm going to set up a few planter boxes in key areas where I know my dupes are and I know where there's some carbon dioxide. And then I'll plant an oxyfern inside of that just so that they can continue to breathe well and they don't up, you know, end up catching their breath in the middle of the night and stuff like that. You can see here that the oxyfern seeds, I mean, they do consume a little bit of dirt and some water, but that isn't too huge if you don't make too many of them. So try to keep as many of these naturally growing as possible and only plant what you need. At least that's what I'm going with. So the other thing is I'm, I'm going to move the food from here. I'm actually going to move it down into this area. We already have an area that's kind of open. So if I put it down there, then it should be in carbon dioxide so that the food doesn't go bad. And I can also set up some furniture above this, a little mess table and stuff, um, so that the dupes can eat inside of there and they'll actually have another morale boost. So I can use higher skills. So I'll go ahead and set that to all, set it to six, and then I, what I usually do is just set this, you know, lower. And then the dupes will move this from one ration box to the other. <laughs> There's a lot to do. Keep working, dupes. All right, so I'll go ahead and slap down a couple of mess tables right there. And you know what? I think if I put a water cooler and a door there, I'll actually turn this into a mess hall. Let's take a look here. Room overlay, mess hall, just tables, no industrial machine. So I probably don't want that, actually. One thing I should do is go ahead and set up the outhouses in a better location, actually get some, some, a sink in front of that so that my germs don't keep spreading around. Right now, it's not that bad of a, big of a deal. But if we keep having the food poisoning go up and up, it'll kind of get out of hand. Let's take a look at the room overlay. Not that one. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Mess hall. Nice. What's in the printing pod? Hmm. <sighs> Neither of those dupes are good. I certainly don't need sand, so I guess we'll go with salt and water. Slap down my wash basin right there. There you go. Put a little tile right there. Boom. So then I'll go ahead and just throw the compost back there. And what I can do, since I've already unlocked it, I'll just put a manual airlock. Oops, not there. <laughs> don't build that one. <laughs> we'll put it right here. Uh, and then we can just lock in the polluted oxygen inside of there. Matter of fact, I could put it right here as well and do that same sort of thing, but uh, that's not too bad. Actually, you know what? I will do that. You see that that is actually a latrine, so we're getting yet another bonus from this. Although I'm about to deconstruct it, so <laughs> the bonus will go away for just a moment, but that should help with morale and it should help with skills. You can see that we're up to a uh, five. Five morale, which is not bad. By the way, thank you to everybody that's been subscribing here recently. It's been a real big upswing, the biggest upswing I've ever had on YouTube. And it is super exciting. I mean, like I um, all week this channel has broken its records over and over again. I think we had a 200 day, a 300 day, and then it was like 500. So I'm really excited about how many people are subscribing here recently. I've never had my channel grow like this. So uh, big thanks to everybody here that's been supporting me over these last several months. So if you're one of the new people, uh, say hello to me in the comment section below. I'm glad that you're here. I hope you enjoy this channel and this content. All right, so I'm gonna copy this one up here. I'm getting a little smarter. I put the ladder right next to it. Actually, I should do that, right? There you go. And now when I go to use that, now I get the ladder with it too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Things are getting, ooh, it's getting fancy. Ooh, I gotta plan it out a little bit further like that. There we go. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> that was a nice idea, but it didn't work. I have to plan the ladder out separately. Deconstruct that, please, dupes. These poor dupes. <laughs> There's like no oxygen around here. Well, I guess there is. It depends on where you're at, but man, do they have a big job. Look at this. Okay, maybe this one will work better. Let me try that. Maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that kind of works, but you really can't walk on that ladder. Ah, I'm just gonna have to do the ladder separately. All right, so where do you have a couple of achievements here? Outdoor renovations and bed and bath. Okay, so that's nice. Those are fairly easy to do. All right, so I think it's time to bring in another duplicate here and speed things up. Let's see here, do we have a good one? Oh, Marie's not bad. I'll tell you what, I can go with Marie. She doesn't have the best skills here, but she can be kind of an all-arounder. Plus, the reduced air consumption rate is going to be extra nice. And your name will be Pancake King. Welcome to the base, and thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Oh, they're a loud sleeper too, so I'm gonna have to like do something with these extra snoring dupes. Get rid of that, we'll get rid of that. I guess we don't really need it. No! Pancake King, you're going to go down there and you're gonna rock everybody's ears all night. Uh, and we need another 
Spot to eat, there you go. Yeah, see the germs? Since we put that sink in there, it's taking care of our problems for us. One, two, three, you need three tiles on either side here. One, two, three. Ah, you're just going to have to sleep on the other side. Or you know what, I'll stick you up here for right now. There you go, Ren. One small tweak we could do here is just leave these doors open. It's still going to be a room, but the dupes don't have to slow down ever so slightly to go through the door. What happened to that? <laughs> ah, darn it. I deleted it, that's what. Okay, Pancake King, you're going to sleep right there. Ren, you're sleeping over here. That'll be good. And we'll set those doors to open. And there we have it. We still have the room overlays. Sweet. Pancake King, you already have a skill? What? I think I want to give you carrying first. That's just going to be a good one since you're going to be kind of an all-around dupe. Okay, so we're going to continue to roll down the research here. Let's go ahead and just get a little bit of decor. Eh, that'll kind of help things out. Plus, we'll get the fly, uh, flower pot. That'll be nice. All right, I'm going to continue to go down decor, and that's actually going to get me into automation and everything down there. So make sure I do that. I will want sensors and all of that good stuff. So we'll keep the research rolling while we continue to build up kind of the heat shield here. Okay, so I want to plan my ranches out like probably right now. So if I do that and then I'm five up from there, then that would be another one. And then I could technically get yet another one right here if I wanted to. However, if I'm one down from that, and that would put me right on this level here. I would just scarf down. I'd kind of scarf the earth a little bit, moving that one down, but then I wouldn't be able to have one there. Crap. So maybe I only have two. So this right here, boom, if I built it just like that, that would be ranch one and that would be ranch two. I could throw a bunch of pips in there and kind of grow some trees if I wanted to. Not only would that provide me with some plants, but it also provide me with some food too. It's not perfectly spaced apart, but it is pretty good. So I think that's a, a fair strategy. So then if I were to stick one of these grooming stations in there, it'd be just like that. Boom, planning ahead. Whoa, look at this geyser. It's right next to my base. <laughs> I wonder what it is. We could run out there and poke it, which I think we should. Yeah, we'll dig up there. We'll give it a little poke. We'll see what's in there. If we don't fully uncover it, we don't have to worry about it too much. Oh, crap. I can't really dig. I might be able to dig there. Nope. How's the temps doing up over here? Ooh, yeah, they're starting to creep in a little bit, especially along this, in these really narrow areas. It's getting toasty. Come on, dupes. Build faster. <laughs> you know you need to. So I guess I think I might, I'm just going to have to stop researching for a little bit here and just put all my dupes on building that heat shield. All right, so I have a bit of a food shortage here. I'll have to dig up some of this hexalent, and then we can continue to move forward with the rest of the plans. Although there's a lot of stuff that just needs to be harvested. Pancake King, can you take care of that for me? By the way, your name, you should definitely be the chef. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and put you in charge of cooking and farming. There you go. See that right there, 6,400 calories. That's a lot of food. Okay, so you remember how I was saying the Oxy ferns here, they only put out 7.8 grams a second. Well, look how much they do a ton more when you actually put them uh, in a planter box like this. And that's 31 grams a second, so that's not bad. Two of those is just about equivalent to one of my reduced duplicates. So even though I don't have a ton of oxygen in this base, I still do continue to get more and more, so it's not bad. Okay, let's see if we can see what kind of geyser we have over here. Mm, you gonna show me? No, no you're not. Darn it. Hey, run, give that another try, bud. You can do it. What do we have? A volcano! Ah! <laughs> Just what I wanted right next to my base. Mm, who thought a geoactive volcano map would have a volcano right next to your base? Well, I suppose we asked for the problem, didn't we? Alrighty, so we can, we can, we can leave that one alone for a little while. We don't need to go over there and poke the volcano at this, at this moment. Ooh, lucky me. We got some shine nymphs. Welcome to the base. Right now I'm not doing a lot of sweeping. It would just take too much time. I have to build the heat shield first. Yeah, because look at that. It's starting to get a little toasty. And how much have I really built? Mmm, I might have built 40%. I really wanted to say half, but maybe, maybe. I guess it's going to take me about 40 cycles to build the heat shield. It's kind of fun doing this thing though. You can kind of just mouse over it and draw it up. There's something satisfying about it. Now I could be building less tiles if all I'd, you know, cause technically all I need is this uh, and then the heat cannot transfer through that gap. But to me that just doesn't look right. 
Okay, so you can see the first plants up here that are shutting down due to body temperature. So this area, yeah, it's about 40 degrees Celsius. That's too much for my mealwood. All right, so I'm at a point here where the food is starting to become a problem. I can only harvest so much more natural growing mealwood before I end up running out of food. Now there is a few excellent plants left around, but not a whole lot. I definitely have to start to plan to eat some more food here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of put down a, a little cooking station. That way I can get the most out of my mealwood. We'll do a little bit of that, but not, not too much. Okay, so when you look at the numbers here, it actually doesn't take a whole lot of these mealwood plants to support my duplicates. And if I don't convert it into meal lice, I don't end up using up a lot of water, which is the most precious resource I have. Uh, dirt down here will actually be in abundance. Well, actually, it already is in abundance. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. And since mealwood only consumes dirt, right, per cycle, it really isn't that big of a deal. Plus, once I get my system up and running that produces dirt, that will simply just produce food in the form of meal lice. It's kind of nasty. Dupes don't like to eat it, so it's not that great for morale, but free food, you know? All right, so I'm just going to go around and dig up all of the mealwood I can find that's just too hot now. Look at that. All of that just isn't growing anymore. The temperature has, has moved in and cooked it. So if I'm going to dig that up and I'm going to deliver it right down here. And then hopefully the temperature will come down, eventually it will, and I'll be able to grow some more food. What's the temp like down here? Ooh, you know, it's a little it's a little warm. It might be too warm. Crap. Uh, the temp's over there are too hot. The temp's over there are too hot. Uh, where do I want to put where do I want to put this? Now I could just dig it and put it anywhere, but I kind of want to maximize, you know, what I can get out of my pips. So I don't want to dig up stuff too quickly here. However, it is important to survive, so let's go ahead and just do that. All right, so that's 15 farm tiles right there, and the temperature is not bad in that area, so that'll that'll work out pretty good. And I already have a heat shield built up over there, so then hopefully that heat doesn't come in too much. Oh, thanks, Pip. Thanks for helping me out. All right, hopefully we can get some pressure up in there. Hmm, things are starting to get challenging here. So I don't have enough pressure here, and down here, I, everything's too hot, even though I do have enough pressure for to grow stuff. Okay, so here's my idea. What I can do is I can go ahead and start to just grow mealwood right along this ladder, because there's always going to be oxygen in that area. So instead of building like farms that are underneath this spot right here, which should, it looks like it's finally getting some pressure now that I put some airflow tiles on top of this, I should be able to, to grow on top of this stuff. So my hope is that I can go ahead and grow on top of this stuff right there. So if I put it right down there, you know, and then I put a planter box on top of it, I can grow food. And the thing about this is since it's close to this kind of vertical spot right there, the temperature is, is pretty good in that area. The heat is starting to creep in right here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and crank up that priority and get this done, please. <laughs> um, I don't know. Things are starting to get toasty and, and that's making it more difficult. But the one thing I cannot live without is food. I can kind of reduce oxygen a little bit if my dupes are constantly trying to catch their breath, but I can't go without food. All right, what do we have in the printing pod? Be food, be food. No, just water. <laughs> uh, I guess that's better than nothing. I might have to eat one of my pips. Okay, one other thing I could do is crack some of these eggs and then fry and then cook them up. I should have a duplicate with enough ability to do cooking. Pancake King, you can now use the electric grill. So I'm going to try to get this done. There we go. And that done this time, please. Okay, so there's three pick, pip eggs out there. I'll go ahead and crack those. And that'll give me three raw eggs, which I can then cook into omelets, so long as I have power. Come on, dupes. Come on, dupes. Jump on that wheel. Jump on the wheel, dupes. Jump on the wheel. Okay, there we go. We're gonna take care of that egg cracker, please. Disable that. There we go. All right, come on, operate that thing. You can do it. There you go. Jump on over there, dupes. Make sure we get that done. Okay, and now we're going to make that forever. Take care. <laughs> Cook that omelet, Pancake King. You need the food. There we go, that's a few calories. All right, there we go. So <laughs> we've got a little bit of food. That should be enough, though, for the, the mealwood to catch up. Yeah, that got a little difficult there, at least with the, the temperature. That was the big thing. 
I put it down over here and it just was too hot. So the, <laughs> so I, re I, re I lost a couple of cycles because of that. And then up here, the pressure's not all that great. So <laughs> why is there an arbor tree growing down here? Pips, what'd you do, man? You little punk. I'm going to name you Troublemaker because you keep planting stuff where it doesn't belong. There you go. Do, 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 do. Plant it up. There you go. All right, there we go. Finally digging this stuff up so we can plant up that insulated tile. Things don't get too hot, hopefully. Hmm. And some, some meal lice to kind of harvest right there. Good deal. Good deal. I think our food problem is, is, is behind us, but oh no, we got a meep now. You can't turn down meep. Cannot perform digging errands. What? I don't think I've ever turned down the first meep that has ever shown up, but <laughs> this was the worst dupe ever. I'm going to go with food. <laughs> Sorry, meep. I'm hungry. Speed of food, my little pony. Now, I'm just kidding, guys. I, however, I do want to say thank you to Humble Bundle for helping support this channel here over the last several months by providing a consistent flow of really great bundles, such as coding and app development by Packet. In this bundle here, you can brush up on your coding skills by using either written or video training tutorials, such as real-world iOS projects, the Android 9 development cookbook, or hands-on web development. If this bundle looks interesting to you, there's a link in the description below, along with the other bundles that are currently available as well. And using that link will not only go to help support a great charity like One Life to Love, it'll also go to help support this channel, because as you can see right here, I'm partnered with Humble Bundle. So once again, thank you guys so much for your support, and have a wonderful day. The one thing I'm starting to feel a little bit of concern about is is the oxygen. It's not incredibly high, although I do have some good oxygen down here, so that's not bad. Uh, maybe instead of focusing on this, even though I really, really want to do something else besides build the heat shield. I'll be honest, I got to build that heat shield, don't I? Just get that done. All right, duplicates, go up here and dig this. I'm <laughs> I need to get this heat shield done. <sighs> Look at these temps. I mean, they are just it's starting to encroach, isn't it? Here, there, and everywhere. I'm running out of cool temperature. All right, come on. Build the shield. You need to build it. Come on, Nicola. Keep digging. <laughs> keep building. What do we have going on over here? <laughs> come on, people. How are we doing down here? Yes, there you go, Ren. Good job. Yet another printing pod. What do we have? Ooh, a wart seed. Oh, wait. Well, I guess if it's naturally growing, it'll actually cool something. Where are you at, Troublemaker? Uh, I think that's you. Nope. Is that you? Yeah, come on up here and plant that thing, please. <laughs> like, one little wheezewort is going to handle all of that. <laughs> if I could get some algae out of the printing pod, that would be nice. But I don't think I'm going to. Now, there is some algae. If I really wanted to go and try to find it, I don't know where exactly which way I'd go. This over here is an oil biome already, and there's another volcano just ready to burn my face off. Hmm. Oh, there's another geyser right there. Jeez. And if I venture out there, it's going to be super hot. Although, there is a lot of oxygen right up here, and it's about 50 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, at least that's oxygen. I feel like what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of reconverting oxygen, or carbon dioxide, I should say, back into oxygen. So it's not like I'm really making more... But I'm using the oxy ferns to get the most out of the oxygen that I have. Whether or not it'll be enough. I do know. It's starting to be kind of slim around here. 200 grams. Okay, so before I go and do anything too crazy, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna try to get some of this oxygen out of there. The temperature's already kind of hot in this spot, but at least I can pump in more oxygen and that'll be good. So what I'll do is I'll set up a little bit of a manual pump down here just with a little battery and I have the gas pump unlocked So maybe I could just let this naturally flow in but I can also just pump it in too So I can really just do that just like so Throw down a couple of batteries So this way I at least have a fresh um, Fresh amount of more oxygen coming into the base Right because these oxy ferns they only work when they're in carbon dioxide down here, at least the ones that are planted. So they consume a little bit of carbon dioxide and then emit that as oxygen. So I'm a little afraid that I'll just end up eventually running out. Although there are some spots of, you know, decent amount of oxygen over here. This has over two kilograms in it right there. 
All right, so right now I'm just letting the oxygen flow in naturally. I don't have to run it. But if I wanted to run it, I have it right there and it's ready to go. All right, so I'm in cycle 39 and I've completed about, oh, I would say 75% of the heat shield. I've got a little bit to go there, a little bit to go there, that top part. So not bad, it's coming along. As far as the heat, well, this area has gotten kind of toasty, up to 40 degrees Celsius, 30 in some spots. Luckily, we're still about 22 degrees in the core, so it's not too bad. All right, so here we go. We're just going to run this thing and see how that brings it. Oh, yeah, that's bringing in the oxygen. Hmm. Look at that pressure go up. It's the pressure that I'm worried about more than anything, because if it gets too low, some of these plants here, um, if it gets below 150, they won't grow. So I might end up just losing because I don't have enough oxygen. But then again, we have... Um, some other spots here that are actually working out pretty good. Let's go ahead and just build this, please. There's like 15 kilograms of oxygen right there. So there's pockets of it. All right, there we go. Another section complete. Good deal. <laughs> Stoops. Ah, just finish it up. No, oh, no, the body temperature is too high for this oxy fern. Crap. Ah, same with this one down here. It's just too hot. Man, this is a pretty tough map. You're always kind of balancing right on just, just about dying. When you start to say like 700 grams of oxygen. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it's not quite as easy as any other map. Ooh, 183. It's getting kind of slim here. Might have to quickly research an electrolyzer and, and, and burn up a little bit of water just to get some oxygen in here. If I can spot a slime biome, in any one of these directions, I could I could at least run over there and grab some algae or something. But so far, I haven't spot anything except for volcanoes. And everything's behind abyss light, which I don't really have super skills to go through all of that. Or do I? No, I just got dupes waiting to rank up. No, I, I could do it with Ren. I could get there. All right, what do we have in the printing pod? Ooh, 100 kilograms of oxalite. Thank you. That'll be nice. <laughs> Look at that oxygen flow. <sighs> Although I don't think I necessarily needed it to survive. I think I'm doing all right. There you go, dupes. Just a little bit more right there. We got that piece. We got just about that piece. Come on, get her done, get her done. I want to be done with this exactly on, on cycle 50. That would be awesome. Go, dupes, go. Ah, so close, but not quite. Just missing one tile. One tile short of being done on cycle 50. Although that being said, not bad. I mean, that was a really big project to go around here and insulate my entire starting biome. And it's just the, <laughs> the weirdest shape. Look at that thing. Okay, so now that I've completed the heat shielding here, the machine I wanna build next is this one. So I actually did a video on this one, it's turning lumber into cold oxygen. So essentially what I'm going to do over here is, is produce ethanol, that'll run a power generator, and then over here I'll do an electrolyzer setup so that takes in water, that is actually coming out of this process over here. So I'll actually output a bit of oxygen, so that'll take care of our low pressure situation. And then right up here, this is the heat exchanger, so that's a heat flusher, and that will provide some cooling for our base. So my thought is I can build pretty much those three modules right up here. So maybe the ethanol machine goes over here on the left, the heat exchanger or the heat flusher will be here right in the middle, and then maybe the electrolyzer over here on the right. And then if I build power distribution in just below all of that, then that'll kind of take care of it. It'll probably take up about this much space all together, it's a pretty big machine. And I also have to do a little bit of research in order to get that thing up and running. But now that I'm at least shielded from the temperature, I don't have to worry about my plants roasting to death as quickly. Let's take a look here. Mm, okay, we're at 22 in the middle. In some areas out here, we're at about 34, 35. So it's not, it's not too bad. But once I get that thing set up, I think one of the things I can do is actually just take liquid pipes and they'll pretty much liquid cool this entire starting biome. I mean, I figure, I don't know, that just sounds like a fun project. And then run it through the heat exchanger so that everything inside the base just stays nice and cool. Because don't get me wrong, it's still 66 degrees Celsius out here. And while it's 36 inside, this tile does not um, keep all of the heat up. The only way to do that would be to double up 
these tiles. Now, in uh, the corners right here, it actually is doubled up. It would have to travel through two because you can't travel diagonally. So some of this stuff is actually already doubled up. If I wanted to make it completely, you know, into, into two, all I'd have to do, which is maybe just the right idea, is pretty much double up on the flats. So right here, right there, and that would reduce the amount of thermal energy significantly because the thermal energy that transfers between two insulated tiles is not very much at all. So one potential project that I could do here is I could actually take this cool water right down here. It's 26 degrees Celsius, run it through a pump uh, system, and actually just cycle some water around my base just to kind of cool it down. It would heat up that body of water, but you know what? I don't think it'd be all that bad. That might be a good temporary fix for what I have going on here. However, that doesn't get me any closer to solving my oxygen problem. And unfortunately, even though my dupes have kind of stepped into each little area here, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea if there's a, a nearby biome that will have some algae. Because I could run out there and just grab some algae. And that would be that would be good. So the only indication of where I might be at on the map is that I see space up here. So there's vacuum, there's some regolith. So I'm near the top of the map. If I zoom out far enough, no, it doesn't give me any sort of idea if I'm if I'm at the right side of the map or not. Oh, wait, maybe if I mouse over, it says unknown, unknown. And then if I go over here, it just says unknown. So that makes me think I might be on the left side of the map right here, because that's not too far. Whereas that still goes on for a ways. So I think I'm in the top left of the map. I think the only way to go is down. It doesn't look all that inviting to the right. <laughs> Just loads and loads of abyssalite, super, super hot obsidian. Hmm. I guess the one advantage I would have if I went out the right side here is that, you know, this biome over here, I'm not doing anything with it. It's not critical to my survival if it gets too hot. I could probably just close this arm off. Whereas if I go out down here and I start bringing in more heat and stuff, you know, that's that's just real critical down here. Matter of fact, that is so critical, I'm gonna go ahead and double it up. All right, so there we go, boom. We're gonna seal that up real good. There we go, a little bit more thermal insulation down there for the really critical area. Good, I feel better about that. Who's entombed? Oh no, Nicola! There's two of them. Come on, dupes. Come on, dupes. No, no. Red alert. Come on, dupes. Go, 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 go. Deconstruct now. <laughs> Please. Oh. <laughs> that was close. There you go. Dig it out first. Almost lost two duplicates to an entombing. Okay, so just in case I'm setting up the electrolyzer, I'm not seeing a ton of oxygen here, so we'll see. So I moved my water pickup over here just to kind of get rid of the rest of this water. Um, and that kind of leaves this water right here. This is actually my coolest puddle of water, so I figure I might as well save that for now. I do have water up top. No plans for that just yet. Don't really have a lot of water. Look at my oxygen production in this base. 19. It goes up to 69. Whoo! That's a lot of oxygen, all the way up to a massive 123. But it is lower than the oxygen consumed. Not always, but... Hmm. Oh, you know what? You know what? I could... Here's how I could get more oxygen if I really wanted to. I could produce a little bit of carbon dioxide in, in concentration, and then using oxy ferns, get oxygen out of that. The thing is, the oxy ferns, I don't think they're all that efficient as far as how much water they're using. That's another thing I'm concerned about here. It's 19 kilograms per cycle for 33, for 31 grams a second of oxygen. So 31 times 600 is 18 kilograms per cycle. So it's really one-to-one -one with water, which is not, not bad, but it's not good either. Technically, that's actually better than an electrolyzer. So take a look at the electrolyzer. It takes in uh, 1,000 grams a second of water and outputs oxygen. The algae terrarium, if you actually recycle the water that it runs through, is actually really efficient because it outputs polluted water at 290 grams a second, even though it consumes at 300. But of course, 
you know, we need algae. So the strategy of using oxyferns just to produce oxygen from a concentrated source of carbon dioxide is not really that crazy, especially when you consider that the temperature is really, you know, relatively, I don't think it will be hot. Okay, so this whole time I thought I was losing oxygen via how this stuff is working, but now that I've done the math here, that's actually not what, isn't what is happening. As my duplicates breathe, 2% of the oxygen um, that come, that they breathe in goes out as carbon dioxide. And then that flips completely over when an oxygen fern turns carbon dioxide into oxygen. There is about a 0.2% increase in the amount of carbon dioxide that's inside of the base. So what was really happening here is that as I was digging out more and more of the biome, um, the amount of gas pressure I had in this environment kept going down. So that's why I thought I was losing oxygen, but as it turns out, there was just more volume for that oxygen to take up. But this also does mean that the idea of potentially using something like a coal generator here to turn coal into carbon dioxide and then using water to turn that carbon dioxide into oxygen is actually a very valid idea. Not only that, it shouldn't add a lot of heat to the oxygen that I'm producing, whereas the electrolyzer does add a lot of heat. Now, the one advantage that this previous system that I'm that I'm, I'm looking at right here has is that I can use hydrogen to delete a lot of heat. So there's still a reason to actually run this whole unit. Not only that, I get power out of it. So that's good too. That's pretty cool. I'll have to give that a try. All right, so in my time here, it's the next day. So bright and early in the morning. And you know what? I think I see what you guys are seeing here now. And you know what? There is something that's wrong with this base. Well, I think it's technically impressive that I more or less have thrown a, a couple of dupes in basically a hole here and given them eh, just about nothing to work with that they have managed to build this nice thermal barrier. However, from a an impressive visual perspective, there's not a lot going on here. And if there's not a lot going on here, the base doesn't look cool. And if the base doesn't look cool, it kind of sucks, doesn't it? So rather than have my duplicates just hang out on these cots for a long time, Let's go ahead and give them some place cool to live. I think the cool place for them to live is going to be right up here in this kind of arm of the amoeba. The temperatures up here are not too bad, so I think they should be relatively comfortable. And I can build up several different apartments for them right here, so they can each have their own private room. And it looks like if I, I'm not sure how far this equipment is going to flow over, but I should be able to potentially do kind of a great hall and maybe like a little bit of an entertainment spot. Mm, maybe not all in this area, but pretty close to this area, maybe close to the printing pod at least. I might have to move this farm. But the idea is that I'll have all of the sleeping econo uh, stuff over here and then I'll be able to throw down the toilets and whatnot right there so I can start to capture some of that water, you know, rather than just have the outhouses doing their thing. And since I'm capturing some of that water, I can go ahead and implement that sort of carbon oxyfern plan I had to add oxygen to this base. So I'm going to go ahead and give Pancake King here the operating um, plus two to machinery, you know, try to get this manual generator up and running so that we can research that simple coal generator right down here. I mean, these poor dupes, they've been here for nearly 60 cycles and they're still on the teeny tiny batteries. So the good thing about this is I'll be able to afford some more skills. You can see that my dupes there, they're doing all right on the morale, but they are pretty close to stressing out. At least Ren is pretty close. Mm, Nicola's pretty much maxed out. Do I have anybody that's decent at art? Oh, Pancake King, you are. Well, Catalina can actually work up towards ranching then. Won't be able to afford it just right now, but I do want to get ranching up and running. Oh, and there's algae. <laughs> there we go. That'll at least produce a little bit of extra oxygen for us. We could just throw down a diffuser and pump it into the base. Hmm, so I have a little bit of polluted oxygen over there. That's what's going on. It's this little bit of polluted water. Not sure where that came from. Oh no, I have stuck dupes. Quick. <laughs> All right, so I just finished up the power research. So I want to unlock the gas element sensor here. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to put this coal generator I think right down here. So then once it's right down here, I can actually build airflow tiles and then a planter box with oxy ferns on top of that and then use an automation signal to detect, you know, if there's carbon dioxide present or not above that thing and then enable it or disable it as required. So it's really just pumping oxygen into the base. All right, so that, that automation went by really quickly. Now to add some decoration to my base. I do have the wallpaper mod on so that we can make things look fancy. So I'll go ahead and unlock that and then we can get the little crown molding and hanging plants. 
It'll be real nice. And then the next thing I'm going to unlock here is sanitation. So I get the lavatory, mesh tiles, showers, and sinks, which is normally something that I would do at the beginning, but well, we're 61 cycles into it. Actually, for reference here, let's go ahead and take a look at the colony summary. I have built 600 insulated tiles this far. That's where all of my time has gone, just building all of that. This thing's pretty cool too. I. I didn't set the resolution higher at the very beginning of the game, so it's a little bit low quality, but you can still see the time lapse of everything that's happening here. I think it's pretty neat. It's a neat feature. So you can see how we just kind of build up here and we kind of make that do the heat shield. I don't know, it'd be cool to see how, where that goes from here. Look at all these little shine bugs up here. Woo woo! We're gonna have to build another shine bug reactor. Maybe not quite as much as I did my last base, but I don't think there's any way I could not build the shine bug reactor. It's just too much fun. What's the temps like up here? It might not actually be that bad. I mean, all I have is abyssalite right there and, you know, the hot molten regolith of space. Okay, it's, it's really not that great. Okay, it's 60 some up there. Maybe not. What do we have in the blueprint now? Ooh, some pip eggs. Perfect. I love pip eggs. I want to start ranching my pips right down here. Row of trees, boom, another row of trees. It's gonna be all you, Pippi. Yo, I still have 500 kilograms of algae. Oops, deliver. Today, please. It's priority level nine. There's a lot of sweeping that needs to happen here too. This is probably the least I've swept any base ever because I pretty much haven't swept it on. I haven't swept it at all. <laughs> Not even a little bit. This is set to sweep only, but as you can see, my dupes have completely ignored that. Thanks, dupes. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You've been kind of busy, but hey, your vacation's over now. Get back to work, dupes. We gotta build the base and make it look cool. Okay, so when it comes to a bedroom, you need a comfy bed, no cots, right? No industrial machines, but it can be as small as 12 tiles. So if I were to just plan this out up here, just kind of use some, I could make the bedrooms about this big, right? One, two, three, four, five, that's 15. And then just keep doing that number. So that means I could put three duplicates right there, and if I just keep going with this same sort of pattern, I could get I could get six dupes up there. So that's not bad. Matter of fact, I can do a whole group of them up there. I could do nine dupes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> now, if I wanted to squeeze it over to the right, I could do that a little bit more. I'm not sure I really want to. I kind of like the idea of having this little pathway all the way around the outside of the base. Even though that does restrict me, I think it looks cool. And remember, that's the most important thing. If it looks cool, you should definitely build it. So bam, I could just go in there and make that the bedrooms. Put the doors in just like this. And I have to deconstruct a lot of these ladders, which won't be too bad. I don't need them to build all these power wires and get rid of that. Mm, just make sure you dig through here, dupes. So then I could plan the facilities right down here. So this could be like showers and bathrooms. And then, yeah, 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 I can even get a great hall down here. Maybe even the rec room. Okay, that's like getting, uh, it's kind of ambitious, but I think it might work. Okay, as far as decoration goes, geez, then we got enough uh, shine bugs up there. And then I could throw some decorations in there. Let's say we do a little sculpting block. I really can't afford much else. Maybe a flower pot. I can't do like the skeleton display, which is actually from a mod, because um, I don't have fossil. <laughs> so. I really haven't unlocked anything else, so maybe just the sculpting block is the way to go. Flower pot is a good idea, just to kind of see how the, how the temperature is up there. Keep an eye on it. Now, I'll have a couple of noisy dupes, but they shouldn't be able to affect each other, because there's three tiles right here, so that should be uh, spaced far enough apart to where they don't have to worry about anything. Now, I could be using my blueprint tool, but I don't have all the pieces in place just yet. Here we go. I'll make use of it. I also want to make sure I have airflow tiles beneath it so that the carbon dioxide can flow out. So here we go. Now that I've got my blueprint, let's go ahead and try this. So I should be able to take this and just slap her down. Boom, boom, boom. And we can tile this thing out. How cool is that? Should have done that from the beginning. But hey, there we go. We can do mirth leaves up here. That'll actually work. Goes up to 50C, so. Oh yeah, look at that oxygen. Mmm. 500 grams worth of it. Breathing easy. Only in this map would I look at 500 grams and think, oh yeah, that's a lot of oxygen. Speaking of that, I got too much like polluted oxygen over here. That's disgusting. And I'm not doing my research. Okay, make sure we do the sanitation. Do we have the air filters too? That one's right there. 
pretty sure I'll click on that. I'll need that one for for the machine I'm going to build right here anyhow. Well, excuse you, little hatching. That was a mighty cool poop that you just left right there. I'm going to name you Little Pooper. There you go. So there's this little mod that allows you to name your critters. Although it doesn't show the name beneath the critter like it does on the duplicate, so... I thought it would, but... Not quite. Okay, so I don't need quite as many showers as I do bathrooms. So if I were to plan that out here, right, one, two, three, four, try to figure out what that's going to look like. I could potentially do three toilets and three and two sinks right here would actually be okay. All right, so we'll give the rooms a nice dark look to them. I'm actually going to put uh, granite wallpaper down. <laughs> How many shine bugs did I accidentally trap inside of these tiles? One, two, three, four, at least? Doops! What, what did these shine bugs ever do to you? And also, you can't run back here, so... Not that you need to? Mm, okay. Yeah, that wallpaper will look cool. Look at that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't dig that up. Don't dig that up. If I can get a plant to grow right over here, then every time these dupes wake up, they could potentially be in a nature preserve. Ooh, okay. Yeah, try to leave that right there and see if I can get a pip to plant something there. How am I gonna do that? As far as my equipment, I think I'll do a lot of processing right up here. It seems to be well out of the way. And again, I don't think the temperatures up here are going to be much of a problem, you know, for, for where I'd like to have my majority of my growing, which is probably going to be in this area down in, down in here. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing down here? Did somebody make a mess? Ren. Ren. Dude, you didn't make it to the bathroom in time. Ah! Look at that, made a mess everywhere. But you see, that's why you put that tile there, just in case it happens. Always be prepared. We'll call that a diaper block. Wait, wait, wait. Who's making a Oh, jeez, everybody's making a mess. Ah, oh, no! Nobody cleaned out the toilet. Well, then that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, don't... I might be able to do growing over here, too, because there's just not a lot going on over there. Maybe plant up a wild farm in that area, because it's actually fairly large horizontally, right? You can get a decent amount of plants in there. I mean, what I'm thinking over here is potentially bristle blossoms. Wild bristle blossom. If you can manage to grow those, that actually works out really good. Or at least I think it would work out really good. My... What are you doing, dupes? What are you doing? That's not out of order. Oh, they're waiting... Delivery? Is that what it is? Why is nobody delivering dirt? There's dirt everywhere. Look at it's like right there, dupes. <laughs> it's priority level nine. What what more can I do to help you, dupes? Hmm. I think it's because I don't have somebody delivering. Delivering. On a side note, I was able to free up several of these shine bugs, so that's good. <laughs> Managed to go from this tile to get stuck in that tile, but um small victories. Take them when you can get them. There's still one trapped right there, so I'm going to deconstruct that. Lots of awkward puddles of pee. Still got to deal with those. There you go. Fly around. Please don't stay in the room. It's not going to be good for anybody's sleep. In case you're wondering, light will wake up your dupes. They don't get a good night's sleep if it's bright. That's kind of a newer thing to the game, too. So if you can leave the doors open, then they might be able to fly out. So apparently priority level 9 mopping isn't high enough. <laughs> dupes. Dupes. Dude, I do have somebody who has tidying. <clears throat> Catalina. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the amount of meal what I have going on in my base. I don't need all of this, so we'll just get rid of some of it. Mmm, a nutrient bar. Thank you so much. I, I have already 66,000 calories of food, so that's pretty good. Well, I completely forgot about this project right down here. So what I wanted to do down here was set up my oxy ferns. And then what I'll end up doing is putting a gas element sensor, and I'll put it like right there, just above the plants. So when that's carbon dioxide, I disable this thing. Or maybe I set it up a little bit higher than that. So the idea is to keep these things just saturated with a little bit of carbon dioxide so that they will continue to, to grow and grow and grow. The other thing is I could actually put a refrigerator down here instead of that, and that would be a safe spot for my food because it would be in a um, carbon dioxide environment rather than this kind of odd location, which is okay until a duplicate has a, like an accident and flows some polluted water onto it and makes all of my food disgusting, which uh, <laughs> has actually already happened. So <laughs> there's that. So here, we'll tackle the germ problem 
put a little wash basin right there. That should take care of it. At least the dupes will kind of clean themselves up every time they go past that. All right, I'm going to have to disable proximity just for a little bit here, just to get some of this stuff done. I don't think the dupes are coming down here based on the proximity thing, so. What have you done now? Shine Nymph, you ended up in the door. Ah, there we go. Nice clean dupes. Hey, right, clean yourself up. There you go. There we go. Less food poisoning. <laughs> Slightly. <gasps> yes, a mirth leaf right there. Perfect. I mean, it's not, not, not completely perfect. I would like to have it over here, but I'll take what I can get. So that means if I research the park sign, I can make that into a nature preserve and then improve the decor by just sticking a sign right there and then maybe a door right there. That's rather fancy. There we go. Okay, so now I need the rock granulator so I can build up some refined metals. Ooh, and we also have a kiln for clay too. That'll be nice. But now I've got plumbing. So there we go. We could set up a couple of toilets in here and I can set up a sink. Boom. And as long as I make the flow go so that you can only go out that side, you should always be able to use the bathroom and then use the sink on the way out. One sink per two toilets, eh, that works out. It's good enough. And then I could set up the shower just beneath that. And I can actually just work on, on moving that wall back a little bit. I'll use sandstone just to kind of designate this area back here. I would make it blue, but I don't really have sedimentary rock, so kind of got some limited supply of options down here. Although what color is aluminum? Eh, it doesn't tell me. I'm not even sure if it'd be implemented into that just yet. How's the heat over there? Well, you know what? It isn't bad. It's not bad at all. And then we could just work on getting rid of that ladder right there. Okay, so one piece of equipment that I'll need here is the water sieve. And I nearly have that researched. I was just about there. Just a little bit more advanced research. I'm going to put that right down here. I think it's always good to have just a nice closed loop with your lavatories, the sink, and the showers right there that you use all the time. Just make that a nice closed loop, pump some water into it, and then have a little overflow if you have extra extra um when you get extra water from the lavatory here because your dupes add a little bit to it which that'll be good because the heat exchanger for this machine is going to be kind of in that area so it's it's pretty close uh, yeah that'll that'll look all right Let's see if i can get my hands on that park sign right there okay so the next thing i'd like to build up here is a great hall it takes a couple of mess tables a recreational building which we can just use a like a little drinking thing but it needs to be 32 tiles so I'll put the water sieve right there, and then I'll try to put that recreation, uh, sorry, the great hall right above that. We'll see how that goes. So the liquid that's going to flow into here, will just go like that, and then it will flow out that direction. See that, guys? I got it right. Ha! Finally. No, 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 no. I don't want a larva egg. Oh, wait, yes, I do. They're eggs. Oh, I got rid of my egg cracker. Oh, well, we'll slap down another one right there. I don't want those things floating around and then making a bunch of oil that I'm just going to keep stepping in. No, oil would be kind of nice to have. Mm, no, I don't think so. It's just going to be a mess. Although, maybe not, maybe not. You see, I do have that coal generator down there. Hmm, can I think of anything to do with those? I tell you what, we can always get rid of them if, if it doesn't work out. But I'm going to put a storage bin down here, transfer the eggs into it and then let them loose just to kind of be wild down here in the bottom of my base. And it looks like I could potentially set that to be a ranch as is. Pancake King, what in the world are you doing? Why are you sleeping there? That's not where you want to sleep, is it? <laughs> you can't all, all have one second of sleep. So if I go to Critter Egg down here and I select Larva, I can bring all of those down. I can also do Shine Nymph Eggs and <laughs> Sun Nymph Eggs. We could just bring all of that down here. You know what, let's just bring all the critters down here. There you go. So in case you're wondering why I'm not using these bedrooms just yet, it's because the travel time between where, where they are down here to get all the way up there would be a little bit too much. I don't think they would actually get any sleep at this point. So I gotta finish building a ladder and kind of finish building what I need to build up there to so that they actually move up into this area near the end of the cycle and then kind of rest up and then go back to work down here. Right now, all of this stuff, even though it isn't all that fancy, is right next to each other. Okay, so now that I have all of these critter eggs, I could just plop them out. And there they go. So they'll hatch down here. And then they can do their little critter thing that they want to do down here. Hey, there we go. Coal generators up and running. Just the, at the exact same time that I got rid of the oxy fern. <laughs> I had given up on it. I was actually going to put a storage. I'll put a storage bin right there and put some coal there. And for food, 
bam, we'll slap that refrigerator right down there. So that way I can let the dupes run through here and I could probably just get rid of some of this. The body temperature is still too hot over there, but the temp's only 30 degrees Celsius. Oh yeah, I guess it's just a tad bit too hot. <gasps> so many critters. We got a poke shell. Mmm. Okay, so that'll give us, well, sand. Now that I think about it, I've got lots of sand, but it can come over here and it can eat my poop, so. All right, so there we go. Now we're pumping some liquid. That liquid is actually going to go over here, which means this thing can start to run. I could probably disable that. We don't need more than what I already have going on over there. And we can, uh, we can disable that one too, actually. But now I've got a lavatory that's ready to, to do its thing. And do it, did I finish the sign? Yes. All right, park sign, where are you at? I really wish the mir the mirth leaf was a little was somewhere else, but let's just take a look here. What does it take to do a nature preserve or a park? At least two wild plants. Crap. At least four wild plants. You know what? We got one. We got two. It's good enough for me. Um, where did all my pips go? I didn't eat them, and they have plenty of food. Are they just all in seed forms down here? Yeah, they're all. There's just a lot of incubating pips. There we go. Yeah, use that lavatory. And then one went right past the sink because they hit it at the exact same time. <sighs> mm, we had a problem with the shower. Oh no, mop it up. Mop everything up. Oh no, mop everything. Mop it all up. Oh jeez. Shower water everywhere. I just needed a bridge. That way I can let the extra out. All right, let's take a look at the rooms here. All right, let's take a look at the rooms here real quick. We build that, which should be built pretty soon. <laughs> and we managed to capture a shine bug right off the bat. Nice. How big is this room size? 131. That park cannot be bigger than 64. Crap. Well, if we slap it down here, hey, that would work. And if I get rid of that tile, I can make this into a room. <laughs> Nothing so cool. <laughs> now let's take a look at this room. Oh, nope. If I put two doors like that, then I should have enough. Now let's try it. Aha! Nature reserve. <laughs> Plus six morale, and the dupes pass through it every single day. And what do we have here? Oh, I've got a mess hall. However, if I go and throw a water cooler in there, mm-hmm, it's gonna make it a great hole. Let's see what color aluminum is. Ooh, yeah, there we go. What is this room? Still a mess hall. And that's because we need some better decoration in there. So we can go ahead and do that. Mm-hmm. Now, if I take a look at the skills of my duplicates, look at that. Look at how much their morale has gone up. Oh, that gives me so much more room to work with. Okay, there we go. Now I've got an artist. Mm-hmm. We can go to full build over there and a little extra digging, so that'll be good. I can go to a super digger, perfect. So we can finally get through the abyss light and explore some of the other biomes. So long as you don't catch on fire, Ren. Please don't catch on fire. And we can do ranching, which I definitely need some ranching. Okay, so the critters I want, I want to put pips up here. Uh, and that way I can plant up arbor trees. So I can use the exact same technique I used earlier and actually just build a storage bin, bring in the pip, um, eggs and then they'll at least be in this area over here where they can start to be groomed and everything and be able to have you know uh, tamed pips that i can use around my base <gasps> or oh, the pip squeak it's like the game knew i wanted one all right where are you at little pip squeak there you are you're standing on top of the seeds how interesting okay critter pip pip squeak okay so the one thing that i have going on right now is that my food store is way down here and then the Spots where all the dupes are going to be is like way up there, so hmm, It's not very optimal. There we go. Aha! Pip egg. <laughs> keep running. Keep running dupes. We have such a long ways to go. Oh, there we go. Some more pip eggs. Nope. I do have a lot of tree seeds. Look at that. I've got eight of them up there. All right, so we'll drop the pip eggs. We don't need those anymore. And I don't need any more seeds in that area. What I do want to do though is make sure that I lay this stuff down, right? Lay down ladders. That way, so when they do hatch out, they can't just plant those seeds wherever they want. I want that to be spaced out correctly. That poke shell got big, didn't it? It's no longer small and cute. Now it's like enormous. All right, ooh, here we go. I could do a critter drop off just like this. I could even open this stuff up if I wanted to. Set the critter to be the poke shell. 
and then wrangle this thing up. Oh, look at all the little pipsqueaks. Drop all of that, bring it all back. Copy those settings. Get to sweeping, dupes. Hey, there we go. I can handle that extra water right there. All right, so there we go. One poke shell delivered. Go over there and mm, eat up some of that dirt. You know you want to. It's right over there, a little bit of that polluted dirt. That, that, there we go. We've got one pip over here. You know you want to grab one of those seeds, don't you? You can do it, pip. You want to plant it right there. Actually, you won't because there's a plant right above you, so I have to dig that up. But if I dig that up, then you should be able to go down here and start to plant up these trees. Yep, 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 there we go. Bam. That's one, but that's not what I wanted you to plant. <laughs> plant the acorn seed. You can do it. Come on, Pip. No, no, go back over here. Just a little more. You can do it, Pip. Come on, you can do it. <gasps> what do we have here? Hmm? What did you plant up? Mealwood? Ah, crap. Oh, oh, yes. What did... Mealwood again? No! Pip, what are you doing? You want the arbor seed. You want the arbor seed. That's what you want. Okay, here you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good job. Way to do it, Pip. All right, I'll rename you from the Pip that hates me to Good Pip. And dupes, if you guys see a wild vole running around, make sure to murderize that. All right, guys. Well, I think we are off to a good start here. And 88 cycles in. I do have the bedroom set up. I do have some lavatories and some showers. So man, that's off to a pretty good start right there. The morale, it did take a little while to get up there, but now we're up above 15 usually. So that's pretty good, which means I have some nice, highly skilled duplicates. So yeah, this, de this base is definitely a slow starter. I mean, when you have to just work around the entire outside of this just to take care of the heat. And if you take a look from the perspective of heat, for the most part, the base is not melting. Although it's not getting cooler. So I have to work on it in the next episode here to increase the gas pressure inside of here because the amount of oxygen that's flowing around is is not a lot. It's low pressure. And I also have to work a way to actually take out some of the heat. So luckily I do have a machine for that. So I will be trying to build that here next time. Thanks for watching guys, have a great day. If this looks like the channel for you, Maybe consider in that subscribe button. I'll see you again next time. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.